Yeah. yeah. We're so glad you are here to join us for yet another episode of Rev TV. We love you. Thanks for spending your Friday night with us. Mm. If you want to keep in contact with us during the read, like us on Facebook and Instagram. Send us a message. We'd love to reply to see how you guys are going. Right here, I believe. No, I already did it. It's over here. Alright, what's coming up for Rev TV tonight? We got some more prank calls from Dan. You see, there's only so many times that we can do this, and we gotta get it all out of our system now. I have no idea it's me. We've also got a summer carnival song coming your way, because why not? Pew pew. Then we got some more good news as I continue the series of What is the Church? Tonight, I'm so excited because we get to talk about the Holy Spizz. Love the Holy Spizz. <laughs> And then Mission Man Sam will be coming back with another week of challenges for you guys to do at home. I'm so excited. So without any further ado, I'm excited. I'm ready. Are you ready, Dan? I'm so ready. <laughs> Let's go, because we're TV stars. Hello? Hi, is this Mel Kesman I'm speaking to? Uh, this is Scott from COVID Safe Australia. I would just like to check in to a quick question to see if you've downloaded the app yet. Oh, uh, no, I have not. You have not? Um, can I ask why you haven't downloaded COVID Safe yet? I just haven't had the chance to. Okay, um, just, just another question. Do you, do you care about Australia? Yeah. Okay, because... Because I feel like in this time right now, we as Australians, we need to pull together and rally just so we can try and fight this virus and beat it as best as possible. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love Australia? <laughs> um, I love there. But it just sounds like you don't care about the well-being of Australia. Hello, hello Mel. Um, just, you still there? Yeah. Our records indicate that your phone usage, you use it a lot and you are out and about. Is this true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we just, we just want to make sure you're safe and everyone else is safe. So what would we have to do today to get you to download COVID safe right now? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's fine. I just, just a disclaimer, I just want to let you know that your privacy is totally safe and all it does is work off your Bluetooth around people that are around you. So it's just for tracking information of who you've come into contact with. Um, yeah, and by law, your privacy is our first safety. Okay. So if, if you can agree to download the app after this phone call, can I get you to say, I love Australia? Okay. We need it for our phone recording, please. Sorry, sorry, it's cutting in a bit. Can you say it a little bit louder, please? <laughs> Hello, am I speaking with Hamish? Uh, yes, sure. Hamish, how you doing? This is Rob. How you been? Good, mate. You? Yeah, good. Not too bad. I thought I'd give you a call. Um, I'm just, as, as you can tell, we're currently in a pandemic um, in regards to the coronavirus, as you're aware. Yeah, so are you a recipient of either the JobKeeper or the JobSeeker payment? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, so which payment are you receiving, Hamish? Uh, JobKeeper. The JobKeeper, perfect. All right, so one of the things we need to do currently is we're currently in a pandemic, as I've just mentioned, um, and the Australian economy is taking a massive downturn. Because of that, we're having a lot of social issues that are happening. So one of the things we're asking for at the moment is if we get $50 from your pay, that can go towards helping us everyday Australians. Is that something you'd like to agree to? Sure. Sure, perfect. All right, so if I could please just get um, your first name. How's that spelled? H-A-M-I-S-H. H-A-M-I-S-H. Oh, perfect. On oh, my system, it's saying it's Hamish Carter. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect, Hamish, that's awesome. Just so I know that you're part of the cause, can you please say, I love Australia? I love Australia. Yeah, perfect. But could you just please say it a bit louder, just because I didn't really hear that? I love Australia. Perfect. So what we're doing is, all right, one of the other things we're going to do is, um, 
Sorry, oh wait, sorry, you kept cutting out. Can you please just say it a bit louder? I'm Australian, I love Australia. No, no, not I'm Australian, I love Australia. Can you please just raise your voice a bit louder? I love Australia. Sorry, you keep cutting out. Can you please just, I just, you know what, I love the enthusiasm, but I just need to hear it a bit higher. This is great. So in three, two, in three, two, one, we can do it together, eh? Three, two, one. I love Australia. So, out of 10, how much do you love Australia? From zero to Ernie Dingo, how much do you love Australia? 10. 10? That's, that's pretty good. Like, you're obviously doing a great cause for Australians. That's what I like. <laughs> that is awesome. So, from zero to Tasmania, how much do you love Australia? Nine. So that sounds to me that that's about Victoria. That's how much you love Australia. Victoria. Up to Victoria? Yep. Perfect. Can we get it to 10? No. So you don't like Australia? I do. You do? Okay. All right. So in the count of three, how about um, if I really, really think you were to love Australia, we'd sing the national anthem together. Can you please start it off and I'll sing after you? No. No? Okay, would you would you like would you like me to start? No, I'm not singing. Okay, okay. How about we just we just talk the words out? I'll start off. Ready? No. No. No, okay. Alright. Well, thanks a lot for that, Hamish. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for helping us Australians. Thanks, mate. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Have you ever seen Pinocchio? That's what it was like. It's time for my favourite segment of Rev TV Mailbag. So let's hit this chicken and sing the song. Oh! Hey, do you like my mailbag? Mailbag! 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 Ooh, with the mailbag! All right, first question comes for Dan Hale underscore 25. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I nailed it. All right, it's actually, it's Dan Hale underscore 25. <laughs> Have you seen Cabinet Dance? I know, you still don't know how to do it. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got it. <laughs> do superheroes really wear capes? Boy, the question is, are they superheroes? If they don't wear if capes. If they don't wear capes. Wow. I've got a couple of examples of superheroes that don't wear capes. Hit so. me, hit me. <laughs> First one is Mr. Incredible. Doesn't wear a cape. I'm here for the party. Just your regular average Joe. He's just a bit strong. Come on. Uh, Dash Incredible also doesn't wear a cape. Violet Incredible. Doesn't wear a cape. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, also, your, your little name pool's a bit tight. Maybe you got any yellow examples? <laughs> My mother. And how about next time, Mum? Don't tell me off for prank calls. He did it. Yeah, and <laughs> Mum, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, yours is coming. Also, what's the tea? I love you, Mum. The second question Did Jesus refer to his body as bread rather than meat because he was a vego? Well, 2020, but he also referred to himself as the the light of the world. But he ain't no flashlight. Win, win, win! That's it for Rev TV Mailbag. Let's go.
Well, speaking of superheroes, Dan and I really just want to spark up a conversation. Yeah. You could be a superhero, what power would you have? I reckon I want the ability to be able to summon a cape for anyone I want <laughs> at any given time. What yeah. about you, Nick? Um, I've always wanted to read minds. Teleportation would be pretty sick. Imagine, oh, I'm late for school. I'm in the shower. Teleport to school. You would teleport <laughs> to school instead of... Why would you go to school? I don't know. I'd teleport everywhere, man. It would be sick. That would be cool. If I can teleport, I can fly. It, it looked like this. <laughs> what would your superpower look like, Daniel? I would um, summon capes for people at, at command. Sick. Do like you, what? Do you, do you yeah, like I can what? Do it? Like, mum doesn't believe me. All right, show me. <sighs> Wingardium. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> you really can do it. All right, before we blow your minds any further, let's get out of here. Red TV, I'm so excited because tonight we are continuing our series on what is the church. Tonight we get to talk about the most exciting topic of this entire series. We've talked about how the church is built upon a relationship with God. Nothing else matters except a relationship with God. We talked about how... The church is meant to be sent out as missional people, that we are all sent people to do a mission to fulfill God's plan here on earth. We talked about how the church is about a relationship with God, but also a relationship with others and that everybody can be invited. But I don't know if there's some people out there who are a little bit like me and think it's a little overwhelming. It's too hard. The world is too big. The, I, the, I cannot do God's mission. Or some of you are like, who, who me? Me? Either you're thinking that you're someone that is so messed up that God could never ever use you. You're probably someone like me who thinks, I don't have what it takes to fulfill God's plan for what he has for my life. Tonight, if you are to remember anything, I want you to remember this. And write this down. Keep it in your head. Tonight, I want you to take away the fact that you've got help. So we're going to turn to John 16 in your Bible and start reading at verse 5, but then I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. But now I am about to leave you. Jesus is talking to his disciples. I am about to leave you and go back to join the one who sent me. Jesus is talking about his heavenly father here. He's going to heaven to be with the father. But here's the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the divine encourager will not be released to you. But after I depart, after I ascend to heaven, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will expose sin and prove that the world is wrong about God's righteousness and his judgments. Jesus makes reference to the divine encourager in this section. Some of you at home might be thinking, who's this? Well, let me tell you, I want to I teach you a little bit about who God is. Some of the smartest minds in this world have said that God is like a triangle, equal on three sides. In this triangle, we have God the Father, who we talk about all the time. We have Jesus, his son, who we share stories and we get to tell stories straight from the Bible about Jesus. And we love Jesus. But there is a third part to a triangle. There's three sides to this triangle. All these three sides are different, yet they are all part of the same triangle. They are all equal. None is greater than the other. So who is this third part? Well, tonight, Jesus makes reference to him as the divine encourager, but most people know him as the Holy Spirit. And if all three parts of this triangle are equal and as important as each other, then we need to talk about the Holy Spirit. In fact, I don't think we talk enough about this guy. I grew up my entire life going to church, barely talking about the Holy Spirit. So back to this passage of scripture, Jesus is suggesting that something different is coming. Jesus is suggesting that he is about to leave his disciples. They're probably starting to get really confused at this time. I used to always think, when I was younger, how lucky the disciples had it, that they were with Jesus every single day. They were within his grasp. 
They could touch him. They could grab him. They were with Jesus all the time. Jesus in John 16 is saying, it's to your advantage that I leave you. It's to your advantage that I leave you so that this other will come. When I ascend to heaven, the Holy Spirit will come. The divine encourager will come. It's far greater that I go because the Holy Spirit will be with you wherever you are. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is active. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is your teacher. The Bible says in this very passage of scripture that the Holy Spirit is your divine encourager, your comforter. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit has all the gifts. The Holy Spirit is your provider, all the provisions that you will ever need to do whatever God is asking you to do. Some people say that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent, which is a fancy word for saying the Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit isn't confined to a, a place, a specific space in time. At Jesus' death, the temple of God was destroyed. Jesus then rebuilt the new temple with his resurrection. And when Jesus ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit was unleashed. Jesus left in order to give us the helper. The helper that is there for us whenever we need. The helper that is there for us wherever you need him. We talk a lot here at Rev about following Jesus. And I don't know if some of you are like me, but you're like, it's actually really hard to follow Jesus. It's really hard to, to do the right thing. It's really hard to look a specific way. It's really hard to get better, to improve yourself. Is all of this stuff hard? Yes. I'm with you today saying, yes, it is very hard. Is it hard for you to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life? Yes. On your own, it's very hard. It's too hard. The world is too big. I cannot do this. I can't do God's mission of the church. Is God's plan to restore creation too much for you alone? <laughs> or that dream in your head that you believe is from heaven, it's too hard to accomplish on your own? Yes. Without the helper, you cannot do it. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do it. So why don't we talk about the Holy Spirit more? Well, I believe it's because when we start inviting the Holy Spirit in, the Holy Spirit starts revealing stuff to us, maybe some hard truths that we don't want to listen to. When we invite the Holy Spirit in, He turns the light on and reveals to us some things in our own heart that doesn't need to be there or that shouldn't be there. The Holy Spirit is a confronter. And being confronted, being convicted can suck. But he is also referenced, Jesus references him right here as the divine encourager, the helper. If we start to listen and welcome the Holy Spirit into our life, into our conversations, we start to look like Jesus. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, it means we start to look more like Jesus with less of the struggle. I don't know if any of you have been to Hoyt's Tea Tree Plaza, but when you go there, there's this big stairway up. Now, you've got a couple of options of what you want to do. You can either take the stairs or you can take the option of going up the escalator. You see, both these paths lead to the same thing. The escalator is just significantly easier. When you go up the escalator, you're traveling at a speed and you're not even doing anything. When you start moving yourself, you're going so fast. You start to then look at all the people on the stairs and you're like, what are you doing? Do you not know that this is the easier way to get there? That is what it's like following Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about what is the church. <laughs> and and we, we read about these stories in Acts, the early church, and we start to see some crazy, incredible things happening in this church. We see the sick are healed, lives are transformed. We see people that die come back to life. And it's all with the help of the Holy Spirit. In humanity, we, I believe we love methods. In the church specifically, we, we love methods. But sometimes we want to follow outdated methods because once upon a time it worked and we forget to follow God. When we are a church that fully relies on the Holy Spirit, we only need one method. Ask the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Trust that this feeling inside is from heaven and be obedient to the calling of the Holy Spirit. That way your method is interchangeable. 
God is always on the move and you don't want to be left behind because you're still stuck in this old method. I once heard this guy that is so much better with words than what I am and he is so much more knowledgeable than I am and he puts it like this. He says, we shouldn't pray for the Holy Spirit to move because God is always on the move. We need to stop praying for God to get behind the things that we are trying to do and start praying for the Holy Spirit to help lead us behind what God is already doing. Here at Ingle Farm, we say, God, you build your church. We want to be a humble, obedient people to the will of God in our community. So we start seeing God's church here in our community and not just our human ideas of what God's church can look like in our community. Oh, Rev, if we could be a youth ministry that is Holy Spirit led and Holy Spirit fed, we will start seeing young people empowered instead of enslaved. We will start to see young people filled with Holy Spirit gifts instead of running on empty. Wherever you go, you will start seeing God's kingdom transforming your world. I believe that if we are being Holy Spirit led into our worlds, into our schools, into our workplaces, homes and communities, we will start seeing bullying in our schools gone. We will start to see anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation gone. Our homes in our community will start being under the influence of heaven because you've got help. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do anything. The Bible says, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will see mountains moved. You've got help. And if we are Holy Spirit led, and if we are Holy Spirit fed, we will see this church go crazy. We will see this church unleashed. We will see our community transformed in God's mighty, powerful name. We will start seeing every knee bowing and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord in our community. No matter who you are, if you ask, the Holy Spirit will come. No matter where you are, if you ask, the Holy Spirit will come. You don't need a church building. You don't need a youth pastor. The Holy Spirit will come to you if you call upon it. And the best part is, no matter how many times too, you can ask for the Holy Spirit over and over and over again and the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit is like free refills of Hungry Jacks. You take your cup, you fill it up, you drink it. You take your cup, you fill it up, you drink it. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but if I'm at Hungry Jacks and I've got free refills, I'll take more than I need. <laughs> I, I will go back to that machine as much as I possibly can. I'll finish my meal. I'll be so done with drinking Coke, but I'll still go back to that machine so I've got a little bit more for the road. <laughs> so just ask. This week, spend some time with the Holy Spirit. This week, take some time out. Pray with the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Pray for the Holy Spirit to start revealing to you things that you didn't know before. Pray to the Holy Spirit to teach you. Pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you to where you're going. Pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you up. You start doing this, Rev, and you start being a sent people. You start doing this, Rev, and you start looking more like Jesus. We start looking more like Jesus, and we see God's kingdom come here on earth. So, um, Nick, what's something like super gross you used to do as a kid? Oh, lots of stuff, hey. I'm pretty disgusting, but, um, I... Oh, I used to sit in my backyard, and I used to um, see a trail of ants, and I'd just, I'd eat them, I'd just pick them, and... Oh, <laughs> stop, dude! <laughs> That's pretty sour, pretty gross. Uh, yeah, so what about you? Um, yeah, I used to pick my nose and eat it. Oh, <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> oh, hey, the camera's on. Hey, Rev, how you doing? But I don't do that anymore. Uh, uh, let's go to the next segment. Surprise! It's Mission Mum Mel here. I've got two challenges for you this week. Our first one, now this is a fun one. You're gonna need a friend for it. So the floor is lava, which I know you've all heard of before. But again, you're gonna need a friend, and this is how you do it. Just do it like this. The floor is lava! And our second challenge for you this week is to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Take time out on your week to pray, to read your Bible, just to talk to the Holy Spirit. 
The best thing about the Holy Spirit is that it is everywhere. So whatever you're up to, just invite the Holy Spirit. With these challenges also, remember to film them, put them onto your Instagram story, and remember to tag us in them so that we can see them. And send us an inbox as well. You might even feature on Rev TV next week. But remember, with these challenges, don't be lame, get in the game. Well, Rev, that's all we have for Rev TV tonight. That's so gross. That's all we've got for Rev TV tonight. We had so much fun with you this week. We hope you had a good time too. Um, guys, if you don't want to miss anything, like and subscribe. We've got YouTube, we got Instagram, Snapchat, all the cool stuff. You don't want to miss this. Uh, we'll Do see not. you next week. We'll see you next week, Rev. One, 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 one. I love Rev so. Much.